Hello everybody. Uh, let's start today's lecture. I think last time we were talking about ambiguity. We said that ambiguity is common to uh, many artificial intelligence problems and um, computational computational linguists they are obsessed with ambiguity they have to see ambiguity in any problem they look at otherwise this, this wouldn't be an artificial intelligence problem and just to show some ambiguity example i think i gave you this example um, I gave you this example of I made her doc. Uh, uh, we can find at least five uh, meanings of this sentence. Uh, of course, this sentence is an English sentence, and since it's in English, uh, we if we translate each of the meanings to Turkish, we end up uh, with a different sentence. That's why it makes it it makes it easy to see these ambiguities. Um, <clears throat> these were the meanings, and we talked about that, and we talked about the causes of these meanings. One of them was a lexical category. For example, "doc" could be a noun or verb. Whatever the day, I mean, in in English, "doc" could be a noun or verb, depending on which meaning you category you choose the meaning of the sentence changes and we have the her sometimes it is it is possessive her sometimes it's dative her okay uh, for him well the, there is this for him I don't have this problem because possessive is his okay dative is him okay so for English, we don't have this ambiguity for him and his, but for her we have this uh, this, this uh, ambiguity, and then um, then lexical semantic, the meaning of the word make make sometimes is for create sometimes for cook, again uh, causing ambiguity. Then the the if you take make as a verb, uh, it is. Syntactic group sometimes is a transitive. It, it takes a direct noun object. Sometimes it is detransitive. It takes two noun objects. Sometimes it's action transitive. It has a direct object, another verb. Okay. So I made her doc. It's like the uh, move her body. To, I made her uh, uh, to move her body. Uh, kind of uh, approach so these are all causing ambiguities and last time I think we were discussing this we said that ambiguity is not due to the human language grammar words categories we have the ambiguity even at the speech phase okay if you read all of these sentences meaningful or not okay you will see that they all sound like I made or duck Okay, so with the phonetics, you have even more ambiguity. So that means that we have to live with this ambiguity. We have to find ways of dealing with this ambiguity. So what do we do? Last time, I think we stopped here. What do we do? We do, just a minute, am I, am I reading your, okay. Do I have enough people to take the attendance? 36 people. Maybe I will wait and I will take the attendance in a few minutes. So what do we do? There are um, generally four possible approaches. Uh, the, the, the first one is um, you don't you don't deal with natural language processing at a single level, okay? You do it many, many different levels. For example, first you do the morphology analysis, then syntax, then semantics, and etc. Each level can have its own ambiguity. And sometimes if you get information from the other levels, 
if you get information from the other levels, you may resolve these ambiguities. For example, for this one, out of all these 10 sentences, only one or two is syntactically valid. Okay. So after I do, let's say, my uh, my uh, phonetic, okay, my phonetic analysis, and then morphological analysis, morphological analysis, then syntax analysis. After I do my syntax analysis, maybe a tight, tightly coupled uh, loop between these three levels will tell me that most of these sentences doesn't make any sense. Either they are not real words or these, these, these words cannot come after each other. Okay? Because syntactically that it doesn't make any sense. So this is one way of dealing uh, with this problem ambiguity and then uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the loop the second one says that uh, uh, okay there is a pipeline it's not a loop okay there is a pipeline I do my analysis phase one analysis and phase two analysis and phase three analysis goes that way you say that okay I have so many sentences for you and I will give you all of these sentences. In your next level, maybe you're gonna get rid of this one or that one or that one or that one or that one, okay? So this is the pipeline. This is a loop, this is a pipeline. In the loop, when you say this cannot happen, the phonetic analysis can start again and may produce some other candidates. Pipeline doesn't come back, it just uh, continues, okay? So this is the second approach of uh, this is the second approach of um, dealing with the ambiguities. Okay. And the third one is, yeah, I will deal with ambiguities, but I will never say that. Eliminate this one. Okay. I will never say that. Eliminate this one. Or I will never say that. Okay. I will never say that eliminate this one so a question again last time when i ask you okay last time when i ask you how many of you how many of you okay let let me give them numbers one two three four five okay tell me which one you thought that was the meaning at the beginning without thinking anything else. Choose a number between one and five. Just type it in there. Four. Really? Oh, okay. We have two fours. One, one, one, one. I have two fours and four ones, five ones. So one is more likely. So one of the approaches of ambiguity resolution is this. Find the one that is more likely than the others. Okay, how do I how do I how do I find that this is more likely? Okay. I find all the sentences that happens in my let's say i have a corpora is a very large database of sentences english sentences okay of let's say 10 billion sentences in these 10 billion sentences i find this sentence okay and i figure out which meaning is this Okay, one or two or three or four or five. And if I find that one is more, the uh, given the sentence, okay, probability of given the sentence, I made her 
Так. What is the probability of class 1? Okay. Then class 2 or class I. So I do this. Okay, I do R max I. Choose a class I such that the probability becomes maximum. So calculating this probability is not easy. We will spend lots of time on it. Uh, so uh, that, that's called the that's called the probabilistic approach for resolving the ambiguity. It doesn't tell me that I should prefer one the, the one over the others. It says that probability of having this meaning is larger than the others. Okay larger than the others. This is the third one and we are going to use this a lot. We are going to use this a lot. We will never say that the others cannot happen. We will say that okay all of them are possible and but but I I think I think that this has it this has more probability in it. And the fourth one is I like this one. Don't do anything. Okay. Just read this one. We will leave when the duck is ready to eat. What do you understand from this sentence? Just translate it to Turkish. We will leave when the duck is ready to eat. Somebody translate this to Turkish. Ördek hazır olunca çıkacağız. So you mean that uh, the the the ördek is food food is being uh, cooked yes. so we will leave when the duck is ready to eat but how about this um uh, ördek yemeye hazır olunca çıkacağız bir tane canlı ördek önüne yem koymuşlar hold on a minute i, I need to take this sorry I, i'm sorry Efendim. Okay, the second one is uh, we have a duck, a live duck, living duck, and we we offered some food to duck, and when the duck is ready to eat, that duck is going to re-eat. We will leave, right? So two possible answers. Somebody is cooking, cooking. A duck for us, or a duck is there is a duck, a pet duck. We are waiting for the duck to eat something. Okay, does it really matter? Does it really matter if I do this? The duck is ready to eat now. Okay, doesn't matter if the duck is a food duck or a, a pet duck. The duck is ready to eat, so we can leave, right? So the, the, if if my purpose is to whether I should leave or not, I know that doesn't matter which meaning it is. Doesn't matter which meaning it is. Uh, I can just leave, right? So uh, that's a good example for doesn't matter. Don't do anything. Maybe it won't matter. Okay. Usually uh, when there is an ambiguity, when I tell you something during the lectures, when there is an ambiguity. You don't ask me back about the ambiguity. You don't say, I don't understand this part. Do you mean this or that? Why? Because it doesn't matter. I'm not going to ask that question in the final exam anyway. Uh, you might think, and so it doesn't matter. Should I should I know the ambiguity or not? Okay. So uh, the fourth one is don't do anything. Maybe it won't matter. And this one will, uh, many people use this ambiguity resolution a lot. Okay. So whenever it is needed you just solve the ambiguity otherwise you just wait okay so in this course we are gonna do many models and algorithms okay by model what uh, what we mean by a formal way of capturing information formal way of capturing information um, uh, of course this information should be about the natural languages okay for example, the, the probability theory, okay, probability theory, 
is a formal way of capturing uh, uh, natural language information. Okay, or uh, finite state machines. are another models that we use uh, that we use to uh, capture linguistic knowledge and then we have algorithms i mean we we just don't capture the information and look at the information we use that model to write algorithms so that we can do deductions on them we can we can produce results such as the uh, summarization or the sentiment analysis or the translation okay so this is this is the these are the two things that we're going to look at a lot come up with a model a formal model then using that model write some algorithms with the algorithms we are going to deal with how complicated it is in terms of running times and in terms of memory requirements okay for the models uh, we are going to say how convenient that model is in terms of capturing the knowledge Okay, there are some models, state machines, finite state machines. Rule-based approach models are very simple, if-else rules. Logical formalisms, using logic. Using logic. What do I mean by using logic? If I know that A is true, and if I know that if A is true, I can assume B, then in this case, we can say that I can assume B because A is there and uh, modus ponens, the logic tells me that you may assume B is true. Okay, so logical formalisms are used in many fields of artificial intelligence. And uh, lastly, probabilistic models, we are going to use probabilistic models a lot. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, can I answer a question? Sure. Uh, before uh, asking a question, should I raise my hand or directly ask it like this? Well, usually, I mean, the, the, the size of the class is not that, that large. Okay, so you directly shoot your question. Okay, uh, so I was wondering about if we have ambiguity about phonetics, uh, should, uh, should we trace the history instead of uh, calculating the probability? Maybe uh, the user is talking about uh, cooking, and if he or she says, uh, I made her duck, maybe uh, we can understand about uh, he is talking about uh, related with something with cooking. Yeah, that's a good question. You are, by history, I think you mean context. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you look at the context, if somebody is talking about a pet shop okay there is a pet shop and i took care of the dogs i took care of the birds and i took care of the everything and i'm saying that uh, we will leave when the duck is ready to eat okay that probably means that it is not a uh, food duck it's a pet duck right because the context says me so of course context means a lot and whatever we use as the models they should be able to handle the context and among these, this one, the last one, the probabilistic model has the has the uh, uh, uh, uh, largest uh, uh, uh, capability to handle those kind of context. Okay, so uh, definitely, I mean, by looking at simple simple sentence, you cannot do much. I mean, if I give you a single sentence, I made her duck. Okay, without giving you anything, you don't have much chance of understanding what that sentence really means other than pure uh, pure prior probability calculations but if I give you the context if I give you a, a, a large document and inside the, the document you are seeing this sentence then you have the context in that case the ambiguity becomes much smaller okay good okay good question and we're gonna we're gonna look at it later okay and um, um with the algorithms remember we are talking about models and algorithms with the algorithms okay uh, many times 
what we will implement will be a transducer. That means we are going to take some form of input and then we are going to output some form of output. So a sequence of words will be converted to a sequence of tags maybe, a sequence of classes maybe, okay? This is called transducers. But uh, the, the, this process is difficult because there are many ambiguities and many ambiguities means that for a given input, there might be more than one sequence output. Okay, so for these uh, algorithm paradigms, we are going to usually use these state space search. And I will talk about what state space search is. Okay. Uh, uh, then dynamic programming. I am going to show you one example dynamic programming, dynamic programming example today. And we are going to talk about classifiers. Okay, classifiers are, classifiers are machine learning based and nowadays we are using classifiers of deep learning methods. Okay, and uh, this will come into play many, many, many times. And as I said, uh, today I will introduce one dynamic programming example. I think in your uh, algorithms class, you have seen dynamic programming examples. And if you did not understand what the dynamic programming is really doing, and uh, the meaning of dynamic programming, this is a very good chance for you to learn what dynamic programming is. State space uh, search, uh, I'm going to show you a few examples of it. Okay, um, state space search. Uh, may, let me give you actually, you know about state space search. Uh, let me give you one example. This is a very classic example for state space search. Okay, um, you know, the you know, the I'm sure you know the eight puzzle game, right? If you have numbers like 1, 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, 2. Okay, I want you to move your pieces so that this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven eight so how would i do this maybe how many states can i go from here okay i like this is my goal okay this is the goal and from this, I can go to two places, either either um, this way or this way, right? Okay. Which one would you do? On the left or on the right? Which one no. would you choose? Would you choose this one or that one? Left. On the left. I mean, there is no definite answer, but by looking at this one, using the one on the left kind of makes sense because six belongs to, to the last row. Six is supposed to go there, right? 
So I am gonna move six that way and uh, maybe continue doing this. Let me do this again. So take this and duplicate it. One, duplicate, two, and duplicate and three. Now I have three of them. From here, maybe I can here, there, or there. So from here, I can do this. I can do move five there, right? Or I can move three, or I can move six there too. These are the three things, right? I don't want to do this because it, it, put me, it puts me back at the beginning, right? So let's ignore this one. Let's ignore this one. I'm not going to do that. Okay, either this or this. Which one would you pick? This one or that one? I think I would pick... <laughs> on the left again anyway you understood the idea i mean you cannot make this decision you cannot make this decision but if i go further all the paths okay as soon as i see this at the end of them you will say that this is my solution right you would provide a it would provide you a a, a, a solution do this and that and that and that and so this one is same as this one is going to be the same as this one so let me move it let's say here okay I couldn't raise it. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, so this is the space search. And it takes time, lots of time to make this search. And it takes lots of uh, memory to make this uh, search. So what has this, what does this have anything to do with natural language processing? In natural language processing, let's say, natural language processing, let's say, uh, uh, let's say I am I am I am doing a translation from English to Turkish. Okay? From English to Turkish. Every step, every step, I can translate a word or more than one word. Because translation doesn't mean that each word should correspond to another word in the other language. Okay? So at every step. Maybe should I translate one word or two words or three words? And the, each translation might mean something else. For example, duck. It could be ördek. It could be tusmak. It could be something else. I, I don't know. So all of these ambiguities or one word or two word or three word or the word order could be your states. These are your states. And in this case, I have two extra states. Two states. Okay. So... In, in natural language processing, you will do such search spaces which are much larger than this simple uh, uh, state space search. And it will, it will, it will, it will, uh, you will need to do this search in a much more complicated uh, way. Okay, so usually when you do the state space search, you need to find some criteria to trim the space. Okay. Sometimes you need her heuristics to guide your search, okay? Uh, you don't have enough resources to exhaustively search all the space. So we are going to look at some examples of uh, state space search when we do the machine translation. Okay, so this is one. This uh, state space search is one, one paradigm we use with the algorithms, okay? Another one is the dynamic programming. In a few minutes, I will see that we will see the examples of it.
and uh, the, the the final one i guess was the um uh, was the uh okay I, there was okay and classifiers and we talked about the classifiers a little bit and we are going to talk more about the classifiers later okay uh, Salman has a good question. He says that, but in NLP, we don't know the goal. Yeah, we don't know the goal. Yeah, that's a very good point, uh, uh, Salman. Usually, I mean, this is a very nice, in artificial intelligence, we like to play games, especially board games such as 8 puzzle, okay, 8 puzzle game or chess or checkers, right? You know why? You know why we like to do this kind of stuff with the board games? Because every, all the rules are clear. There is no ambiguity with the rules, okay? And the goals are the clear, right? In NLP, we will never know the perfect answer. We will never know the perfect answer, okay? Let's say I have a, I have a document of two pages in English. And I like to translate this to this document to Turkish. Do you think there is one perfect answer to this translation problem? No, right? Because many people can translate the same document to two-page document uh, in many different ways. And even the same person, depending on how he or she feels on that day, can translate the same document in a different way. So how am I going to know what my goal is? Okay, what my goal is at the end, what should I, what should I, what should I end up with? So usually, usually we measure, we measure the quality of our final destination. Um, let's say, we will say how translation quality. Okay, let me do this this way. Translation quality of these two sentences. This is an English sentence. And this is a Turkish sentence. Okay. So how would you evaluate the translation quality of two given sentences? Some people say this. I would measure how grammatically correct this Turkish sentence is. First, grammatical correctness. Okay. Then meaning, meaningfulness. If you measure these two things, okay, and if you add the scores of the grammatical correctness and meaningfulness together, that will give you the translation quality, okay? So for each state at the end of this tree, I will measure these two. Whatever makes it maximum, I would choose that one. That doesn't mean that it's going to be the answer because this space is so big. It is so big. I cannot explore the whole space. So I will explore some part of it. And whatever, whatever node or the uh, uh, uh, state gives me the best results, I will pick that one. Okay, Yusuf has a question. What are the functions that measure the scores of the results? For example, the grammatical correctness. How you measure the grammatical correctness of a given Turkish sentence? Is that what you're asking, Yusuf? Or, or how you measure the meaningfulness? One way to One way to measure the grammatical correctness of Turkish sentence or English sentence. Okay. What is the probability of saying yes in English? Tell me the probability of saying yes in English. I mean, doesn't depend on the, I mean, don't talk about the context, just saying yes. Is it, is it, is it? Is it large or small? How would I know that? I think I would do this. I would do 
I would go to Google and I would say find me all the documents that contains yes. Okay. Well, it didn't give me any meaningful stuff. Okay, let me let me change my question. Yes, I will. What is the probability of These are two, two, two, two, two common sentences, so I cannot get enough answer. Yes, I will do my job on time. Okay. I am trying to get the number of... Oh, okay. It says that I did not find any sentences on earth. Okay. That includes, yes, I will do my job on time. How about this? I will do my job on time. Okay. So, one, two, three. How many of them do you think I have? I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe ten, maybe. Okay. And then the other page, there are total of 20 occurrences of this sentence. Okay. How about this then? Instead of, yes, I will do my, yes, I will do my job on time. How about this, in time? If I do this, how many times I have seen it? One, two, three, four. Just four times. So I will do I will do my job on time is most more probable than I will do my job on in time. Okay. So uh, uh, grammatically, grammatically, I think that saying my job on time is preferable to my job in time. Okay. So this is how I choose one over the other in terms of grammatical correctness. Because usually people write grammatically correct sentences on the internet. This is my assumption. Okay? So you are going to get a copper of 1 billion sentences and you try to measure how likely that sentence is uh, uh, uh, uh, happening in that corpora and you will report that number. Of course, this is just grammatically correct thing. I mean, how about the meaning? The meaning is this. <clears throat> I will do uh, I I will do my job on time is English and for the Turkish part, sabahlara soğuk olur. Okay. If I if I make a search on this sentence and Google, I will see many many sentences. So the probability of this happening large, but meaning wise, I don't see anything connected. So how how am I gonna measure this meaning? This I will do this. I will look at this word sabah and I will find its English corresponding sentence uh, uh, words morning. Do I have any mornings in there? No. That's not a good thing. So that's minus. Soak, cold. Do I see it there? No. Happens. It doesn't happen. So the meaning, meaning wise these two sentences are not that connected. Okay. These two, connect, these two sentences are not connected. Instead of, I mean, if, if I think that the translation of I will do my job on time and sabahları soğuk olur uh, are uh, translationally equivalent, then, well, I say that, okay, this is grammatically correct, but these two doesn't correspond. So what would correspond? Maybe uh, işimi zamanda yapacağım, işimi zamanda yaparım, 
İşimi bazen yaparım. Okay. İşimi yapmam. So uh, uh, I have to choose one of them. And whatever I choose, it should be it should be uh, meaningfully correct. Also grammatically correct too. Okay. So we are, we are going to end up writing these kind of we are going to end up finding these kind of formulations. I know this formulation doesn't make much sense to you right now, but in in nature language processing world actually these are the things that we are dealing right now. Okay? Uh, sometimes things doesn't make sense, but these are the best that we can do. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Okay, we will see. When we come to talking about the probability of a sentence, probability of a sentence, you may want, okay, the natural question is, natural question is, remember the, my first question? The, remember my first sentence? It was, yes, I will do my job on time. Google couldn't find this exact sentence, right? So what does that mean? Is the probability of having that sentence zero? Of course not. It is a perfect grammatically correct sentence, right? So if nobody has said it on the internet, that doesn't mean it's a bad sentence. So how am I going to measure the probability of this sentence then? What is the probability of this sentence? Probability of yes is too, too big, yeah. Is, is, is large. What is the probability of yes, I will do my job on time? Uh, since Google didn't say anything about it, say that I couldn't find it. Is it zero? No. So we will find ways of measuring the probabilities of such sentences. We will do something else. Okay, good. Any other questions? Okay, so in order to feel a little bit better about natural language processing, I looked at uh, uh, Wikipedia and I downloaded these NLP task definitions so that we can understand what kind of problems we are going to solve or they are solving in this field of natural language processing. One is this automatic summarization. Okay. Oh, as soon as I hit it, the, the Wikipedia is connected. Okay, good. Automatic summarization, well, as the name implies, you have a document, you make a readable, understandable summary of the document. Okay, this is a very tough task, but it's a very profitable and useful task. Okay, before reading the whole book, I like to see the summary so that I can make a decision. Is the book for me? Is it good for me or should I skip reading that book, etc. Or to find how similar that book is to other books. Okay. So automatic summarization, one of the one of the tasks. Co-reference resolution. Look at look at look at look at this sentence. He entered John's house through the front door. Okay. When I say through the front door. Front door of what? I immediately understand that it is the front door of the or front door of the John's house. This is this is this front door is referring John's house. Okay. Um, it is determination of what words refer to the same object. Okay, so uh, if you understand this, okay, if you understand this, uh, then your translation job or summarization job will be easier. Another problem that we solve with the uh, NLP task is discourse analysis. Two types of, okay, uh, uh, discourse analysis available. One is this, I have two sentences, one sentence and second sentence. Is the second sentence an explanation or elaboration of the first sentence? Or it is, is it presenting a contrast? 
it is doing something else or it is just supporting the first sentence uh, etc so so the relationship between the sentences that's the first meaning of this course analysis okay this is the first meaning the second meaning is this okay if I ask you a question is it a yes no question or open-ended question content question am I making a statement or am I making an assortment or am I giving an imperative sentence do something okay this is this is very important when two people are communicating with each other okay I know many people or many of you if somebody asks you a question in English and if you don't understand what that guy said usually we tend to say yes or no but if the question is not a yes or no question that becomes a funny situation right even okay I might say same as a question I may say why don't you use microphone why, why do I have to read your questions even we humans sometimes have difficult times when trying to understand each other. It seems like we didn't find a deterministic way of understanding. What do we expect from computers exactly on this field? You mean on the discourse analysis? Well, this problem of human ceiling, human ceiling, is a very big problem for NLP tasks. We cannot expect to do better than humans. Why? Because for the NLP problems, there is no definite answer for most of the problems. What was the perfect translation of a given book? We don't know. Many knowledgeable, skilled people can translate the same book in a very, very different ways. Okay? So we are not going to exceed humans. And the humans don't perform 100% right. Okay. So your the answer to your question is, so no, we don't have a solution for that one. I mean, if, you, if the people are not agreeing on the same problem on NLP, then we are not going to come up with the more correct solution for that problem. That problem is not... This problem is not that big when you do computer vision. In computer vision, okay, you have a picture. Let's say in your picture you have this animal. I don't know what that animal is. Okay. You ask this to a computer and you ask this to a human. Okay. You get two different answers. It says that this is animal one. This one says that animal two. Okay, which one is correct? There is a way to know this. Why? I find this, uh, uh, who took this photograph? And I ask him, where did you take this photograph? He says that this is the animal that I uh, uh, took the photograph of. I find that animal and I do a DNA analysis. And I definitely find scientifically the class of that animal, right? But with the natural language problems, this is not possible because there is no definite answer. I mean, the input to the problem is a human-made sentence. Human-made sentence. Okay? Even the, let's say, I have written a book in Turkish, okay? And somebody is translating my book to English. Even as an author of the Turkish book, I cannot say that this is the best translation or the worst translation. It may change. So Ahmed Semi, we don't have a solution to that problem. We don't have a solution to that problem. And ambiguity is going to stay there and we will never we will never have perfect NLP systems because there is no perfection with the human language. It can be always better and better because we don't have the formal definition. Some people say that we know the Turkish grammar. No, we don't know the Turkish grammar, okay? We don't speak this way because of the grammar. We speak Turkish or English 
and some people try to come up with the grammar that explains how we why how we speak okay but it's a natural phenomenon okay and we are trying to model using the grammars okay good uh, let's take 10 minutes of break after the break we will come back and we will continue looking at these examples we will start with the machine translation so it is 1422 let's be here 1432 okay time is a
Okay. Let's continue from this point. I have a I have a terrible headache. I may have to uh, cut the class early. Let's let's go a little bit, but I, I am I think I will I will I will, I will not do the last hour because I am not feeling very well. Sorry. So uh, let's let's let's continue machine translation. We already know what machine translation is. This is one of the toughest problems of um, uh, natural language processing, and it's an AI complete problem. That means that it requires all the different types of knowledge of human process. Uh, for example, the grammar, semantics, and facts about the real world, and etc. Okay, so. Uh, you cannot translate a sentence from one language to, to another language without knowing the culture of the other language. And you cannot translate it if you don't know about the real world, the physical objects, okay, meanings of, about the meanings of the words and etc. And then we have this morphological segmentation. Um, you separate the words into morphemes, okay? Uh, what do you mean by morphemes? The the the smaller parts of a word, for example, the stem of a word, the root of the word, then the then the suffixes. Okay, in English, this is not a very big problem because, I mean, what can happen with the, with the word open, with the inflectional morphology, çekimekleri. Um, uh, okay. All you can do is open, opens, opened, opening. That's that's that's what what you can do, right? With a word, open. Let's say uh, uh, the corresponding word in Turkish, açık, açık, uh, açıklık, açıldı, açılır, açılırcasına, açılırmış, açılıyormuşum, açılıyormuşlar. As you see, there are thousands of different forms of this word. So this inflectional morphology in Turkish is very, very difficult, very, very complicated than many other languages. Okay. So uh, these kind of languages, Turkish kind of... Sorry, you got muted. Turkish kind of languages. Somebody... turn. Okay. Somebody turned off my microphone. Okay. Uh, so um, I don't know when when when who who turned it uh, off my microphone, but I was saying that morphological segmentation is difficult for Turkish kind of languages, but it's not that difficult for English. Okay, it's not that difficult for English. Uh, uh, and we are going to see some more examples about this difficulty. <clears throat> okay, so it's called morphological segmentation. Difficult problem for Turkish, but easy problem for English. Name identity recognition. It is done as a. It is done as a pre process for many NLP applications. Okay, given a text. Okay. Determine which items in the text maps to proper names, places, time, localization, etc. Usually you choose five classes like persons, location, time, organization, and event maybe. Okay. Given a sentence, you find all the events and you mark them. You find all the person, you mark them. You find all the locations, you mark them. You find all the time reference and you mark them. And you find all the organization, you mark, you mark them. Okay. If you do this, this will be a very useful input for question answering systems. Okay. Because when the question asks, when, when was the Turkish Republic founded? Okay. Your answer is going to ignore your your answer is going to involve uh, named entities that involves uh, time labelings. Okay, 
or the location or the person or say okay who founded uh, the Turkish Republic okay your answer is going to involve a label that is marked with person okay even if you make a mistake even if you make a mistake it's going to be a person again another person so this is called named entity recognition is a very popular problem some people might say that finding the persons is very easy why because you know that the persons are capitalized the first letter of the person names are capitalized i would know that but many languages don't, they don't have the capital letters such as chinese or arabic okay so the i mean don't always think in terms of english or turkish when we do the natural language processing we try to usually solve this problem for all the languages okay there are very di very different capitalization rules for different languages for example german they capitalize all nouns all nouns not proper nouns but nouns okay Uh, then uh, we have natural language generation. What do you mean by natural language generation? You have a database of information and you like to produce human readable text. Okay, human readable uh, text uh, uh, from this information. That's called natural language generation. Natural language understanding is just kind of the opposite you have you have a, a text and you want to convert to some computer format like the first order logic okay and this is a very difficult problem too optical character recognition is uh, trying to produce sentences from an image of a document okay if the printed if the text is printed it is called optical character recognition if the text is handwritten it's called intelligent character recognition okay so ocr is a old problem but it's a mainly almost solved problem intelligent character recognition is something different it still needs more work part of speech tagging is taking a is taking a text okay oh, by the way i forgot to i forgot to take the attendance let me take the attendance uh, we have 43 people and take the attendance I think I got it okay good um uh, part of speech taking takes a for example a sentence and marks each word uh, for the part of speech uh, for example um i read the book okay this is a noun okay this is an article determiner this is a verb and this is a pronoun okay so each word is marked by a label you may th you may think that okay this is easy why because uh, 
I look at the definition of read from the dictionary and dictionary is going to tell me read is a verb or noun or pronoun etc but if you look at the book book can be a noun also it can be a verb okay so how am I gonna know which one which meaning uh, I, I, I, I take for the part of speech tagging of course it depends on the context okay if you look at this one book book book is used as a noun so it's a difficult problem many ambiguous situations in there it's a very popular problem when you do the part of speech tagging um, uh, part of speech tagging is especially important when you do the machine translation for example when you translate this sentence from English to Turkish when you say I read the book okay I read the book in this case remember how I evaluated my how I evaluated my meaningfulness score when we do the translation in this case I should take this book as kitap in Turkish not as uh, ayırtmak book and reservation book a ticket etc or buy a ticket uh, uh, so it is important to have these kind of tags assigned correctly before the, the machine translation or information extraction okay in Chinese it is even more difficult because in Chinese they write the sentence the same way and depending on the context they read in a different way it's a tonal language okay tonal language means that sentence is written in a same way but it is read in another way okay with the tonal languages and we use is even more parsing is determining the parse tree what do i mean by parse tree every language has a grammar uh, linguists okay classical linguist people they sat together and they they found the grammar they said that okay this is turkish grammar this is english grammar and for a given sentence you try to figure out the grammar okay you try to figure out the grammar this is the verb part of the uh, it's going to be a tree actually it's going to be a tree um, remember english is subject okay uh, verb object language okay when you say i read the good book okay where did it go okay here it is here it is i read the good book you have to come up with okay this is my sentence in my sentence I have the noun phrase and the verb phrase okay noun phrase is in this case goes to a pronoun and pronoun in this case goes to I and verb phrase goes to verb phrase and the noun phrase and here verb phrase goes to a verb and verb goes to a read and if i put all of these together i will have something like this a sentence noun phrase verb phrase noun phrase pronoun pronoun i verb phrase is verb and noun phrase verb is read noun phrase it goes like that okay so you produce this tree once you produce this tree it will be very useful for question answering it will be very useful for machine translation and it will be very useful for um, nature language understanding or question answering okay so this is and we will look at this in detail later in the semester 
Uh, maybe I should parsing. We are gonna spend lots of time on it. Part of speech tagging. We are gonna speed, spend lots of time. These no no named entity recognition is going to be a chapter. Okay, this one is we are gonna spend some time. We are gonna spend some time on it. I don't think that I'm gonna spend time on this course analysis. Uh, I will not spend more time on this. Not because they are not important, because we don't have that much time to cover all that all those subjects. Okay. Question answering, typical natural language processing task. You uh, you, you get a question, what is the capital of Canada? Then you give one answer. This is a closed, closed world assumption. You know all the questions and you just found the answer. Okay. But it could be an open-ended question too. What is the meaning of life? Of course, nobody can answer that one. Relationship extraction has something to do with the named entity recognition. With the name entity recognition, okay, you assigned like the labels to the members of a sentence, like the person, time, organization, etc. Relationship extra extraction is assigns relationship between the persons, for example, who is married to whom or which date comes after the what date what is the relation between two organizations okay i don't think that we will spend my, uh, much time on it sentence breaking it could be a it could be a a, a little bit new thing for you because <clears throat> it says that given a document find the beginning and ends of the sentences you might think that you might think that uh, this is easy because once you find these dots periods these are the end of the sentences right it might be easy but we use these periods for many other stuff especially in turkish when you say birinci kitap right uh, I use a period in there, okay? And uh, there are many other things, for example, here, e.g. There are other... So every time you see a period, doesn't mean that that's the end of the sentence. Uh, that, that could be a difficult problem for, for some languages. Sentiment analysis has something to do with the uh, the, the, the emotion of the sentence. You get, you get a sentence. Is this a positive sentence or is it a negative sentence? For example, a tweet. A tweet about uh, our university. Okay. A tweet about uh, gives a technical university. If it says that um, this is the best school, then that's a positive thing. If it says that uh, I am. I regret coming to this school. Then that's a negative to eat, right? So, assigning a positive or negative class to a sentence or a group of sentences is called sentiment analysis. And then we have speech recognition. We have a sound file, sound input, and we like to convert it to text format okay <laughs> again speech recognition is a very tough problem remember i made a doc how many different pronunciations or the phonetic forms were available which are very similar to i made doc again speech recognition is difficult i will not we will not cover speech recognition in this course Let's look at this problem. This is an interesting one. Word segmentation. Word segmentation is this. This is a word, another word, word, word, word, word, word, word, word and word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words in that sentence. Okay? So for English, it is so easy. 
Why? Because in English, uh, words are separated, or in Turkish, words are separated by a space. Okay? But for some languages, such as Chinese or Japanese or Thai, okay, they don't use space to mark, they don't use space to mark the beginning and endings of the words. Okay? So, there is no space in those languages. So, how do they do this segmentation? How do they separate it? It's a problem for those languages. It's a problem for those languages. So, you have to come up with an algorithm to make the segmentation. Okay? Word sense disambiguation, again, is a preliminary step for many other natural language problems. As I said before, when you see a word like book, which meaning of book do I mean in this in this in this in this position? Which sense do I want to use for this for this for this for this word book? It could be, I mean, when I look at the definition of book in the dictionary, there might be more than 30 different meanings. All of these 30 different meanings, which one am I am? Which one I am using? Okay? That's called versus disambiguation, and we're going to look at it more carefully. Information retrieval, actually, it's a separate field of computer science. And it has relationship to natural language processing. You have a database and you are trying to retrieve some data out of that database using NLP techniques. And related to information retrieval, we have information extraction. Okay, so these are some of the popular problems of natural language processing examples. Okay, any questions? Well, some of them will be our uh, chapters of this uh, uh, course. We will look at them more carefully. At the beginning of the semester, we will be doing more like uh, part of speech tagging or parsing. Okay, those kind of things. At the end of the semester, there will be more complete applications like summarization and uh, translation okay so this is a basically an introduction to natural language processing that's that, that's what i have been doing for the last week and first part of this week so let's start doing some natural language processing on the real data okay so let me let me go to This chapter, minimum edit distance. Well, minimum edit distance may not be a perfectly good NLP example, but it uses dynamic programming, and it is easy to understand, and it's a very nice introduction to, to the types of algorithms that we use for NLP applications. The problem is this. If the user types graph, there is no word in English named, uh, uh, written as graph, okay? So maybe I should do a uh, suggestion list. Do I mean graph or graph or grill or giraffe? Okay? So I need to, I need to offer these alternatives to the uh, user so that the user can pick one of them okay so the minimum edit distance says that okay you wrote this but the difference between this and this is you need to erase two characters okay two deletions if you delete these two then you are going to get this which is a correct spelling but if you don't want to do that if you don't want this one, 
So the cost of this one is just two deletions, right? How about the cost of this one? Graft. So two deletions and one, two deletions and one insertion. How about this one? Grail. It is three deletions, two insertions, right? How about giraffe? Oh, this is difficult. Okay, I need to insert I. That's one insertion. Is it correct? Just one insertion. So edit distance between this one and this one is two, three, five, and one. Right? So usually I would put this one at the top. I like to find a way of calculating this distance. Calculating this distance. Of course, this is minimum edit distance. Usually, I mean, let's say, erase all the characters. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I erase six characters and I inserted these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So total of 13. This is a distance, edit distance, but this is not minimum distance, right? So I am trying to find the minimum edit distance. Minimum edit distance. That's the uh, title of the chapter. It turns out that this problem is not specific to natural language processing or word processing. It is used in many other places. For example, computational biology people. Okay. If you have two different DNA sequences from two different sources, I like to align them to see how similar they are. Okay. When you look at them, okay. Remember, if I like to align these, these two words, graph and giraffe, I say that, okay, if I make an insertion in the word, okay, I'm getting a correctly spelled one. I am trying to do the same thing with these large, large, very large words. Okay, it says that, it says that actually at the beginning there is a T inserted. A and G are the same. G deleted. And this chunk of piece is very similar, I, it's the same. Then I have C and T deleted. Then I have a substitution here. Substitute T with a G, then delete these two, then another substitution, then insertion, then insertion again. I need to I need I need a way of finding these deletions, insertions, and substitutions. It might look very easy here from giraffe to graph to giraffe, but this one is not easy. And I like to do this with the minimum number of insertions, deletions, and substitutions. Okay. Can I ask, Can I ask a question? question? Sure. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm hearing, hearing my, my own voice. voice. You are hearing your own voice? Yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever, whatever should I ask? Well, uh, the, uh, well, I am I am hearing you fine. Just okay. turn off your uh, uh, uh, turn down your volume and ask question then. All right. All right. Uh, can, can we, we add, add another, another methodology, methodology to this minimal, minimal edit distance? distance? For, For example, example, if two words have, have the same, same score, score uh, can, can we? we um, Trace the uh, key, key, keys locations on keyboard. Uh, so the maybe the uh, the key is closer to another, so we can guess the user try to type this since majority of text uh, written in a, a keyboard. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, it is done that way. Usually, I mean, uh, people are uh, mixing very common letters. For English, A and E are mixed together a lot. For Turkish, it could be something else. Okay. Uh, usually, you you mix the the vowels, A E O U etc. Uh, that's a good idea, but. It also depends on the user too. Some some people, because of their behaviors of typing, they might be mixing uh, wrongly using a letter instead of the other one. Or sometimes it depends on the keyboard. On one keyboard you do one certain type of error. Uh, and on another keyboard you do another type of error. So these are all considerations and we are going to look at them. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay. So with the edit distance, we are trying to minimize the distance between two words. And those words may not be uh, real natural language words, but it could be like these kind of DNA sequences. And uh, the operations to convert one word to another is going to be are you either insert a letter, delete a letter, or substitute a letter. Okay? And I like to keep these kind of operations at a minimum. Okay? So that's, that's here, here is an example. Somebody has written intention, but I like I like it to be execution. How many how many operations do I need to convert intention to execution? First you need a deletion, right? You delete. You substitute and to E. Substitute. You keep this one same. And this is an insertion. This is a substitution and the rest is the same so one insertion one insertion one deletion and three substitutions if the cost of all of them are the same it's going to be five cost of five but you may say that the substitution takes two keystrokes delete one and insert another one so if the substitutions are cost of two So if you add them together, it makes S, 8. Okay. Uh, for, for one calculation said it is 5. The other one says it is 8. Okay. As I said before, this is again, this is the minimum. If I am not heading for the minimum, all I do is just delete all of them. Okay and insert them or substitute all of them. That means four and five, nine, nine deletions and nine insertions, the total cost is 18. For the 18, cost of 18, I can do anything I want, but I don't wanna spend that much of cost, okay? I like to keep this as a, at a, at a, at a minimum, okay? Sometimes this is called Levin, Levin, Levin, Levinstein distance. And you're going to see this in many other places too. Okay, let's, let's move on. Again, the same thing with the uh, DNA sequence alignment. They use these a lot in there. In natural language processing, we do the similar stuff. Somebody has asked me a question. They, they, they said that, how do you measure the quality of a translation? Let's say that, let's say that from French to English, I have translated a sentence, okay? And I let a human translator translate the same sentence. My system robot, robot said that, your translated sentences, spokesman, okay, confirms 
senior government advisor was shot. Human translator says that spokesman said the senior advisor was shot dead. So how similar are these two sentences? Again, maybe the idea is how much cost should I have to pay to convert this sentence to this sentence? Okay. If I if I delete all the uh, words and insert all of these, I may find the, the, the distance between these sentences, but I like to find the minimum distance. So I can keep the spokesman, spokesman, confirms to said, insert an, uh, the senior same, delete the government, and advisor was shot and dead. Okay? So the cost between these two sentences is, okay, just one, two, three, four. So uh, if the cost is smaller, then the translation quality is higher. That's what my claim is. Okay. Again, the same thing. Named entity extraction and entity co-reference. Remember the co-reference. This IBM Incorporated and IBM is referring to the, the same entity. Stanford, Pre Stanford President John Hennessy and Stanford University President John Hennessy is referring to the same. So when you do this entity entity co-reference, you may again use the edit distance. So when I say edit distance, don't take it as edit distance between two words. Sometimes edit distance between sentences are what we mean. Okay. So, the first solution that we are going to do to find the minimum edit distance is the search, state space search. Okay? State space search. To make an execution out of intention, remember the last example that I gave you? It was an eight puzzle game, and I can move the pieces left, right, up, down, shift, etc. Okay? In this case, I have three operations. I can delete a, a, a, a letter at the beginning. If I delete I, it becomes N tension. If I insert a, a letter, I put E at the beginning. Where does this, where does this E come from? Question. When I say delete, I know that I delete this I, okay? I know that I delete that I. But when I say insert, somebody made an insertion E. Where, where does this E come from? Or substitute. When I say substitute, I becomes an E. And I have. Uh, is this because of pronunciation? No. What are we trying to do here? Finding, you're trying to find the minimum edit distance between intention and what? Execution, right? That's the thing. So, <clears throat> this is a tree. At the top of the tree, I have intention. Intention, okay. I will follow this stuff. And at the end, somewhere I have this execution. So when I do the deletion, of course, I will delete I. It's going to be this one. When I say substitute, what I expect is substitute I with an E. That's why. Or when I do the insertion, insert an E because that to go to, towards the end. 
okay so it goes that way so our goal state is going to be execution when we reach execution we are done okay uh, and our initial state is intention okay here is a here is a solution for you here is a solution for you intention I make it delete I make it delete and it became this another delete tension another delete tension and it goes all the way I deleted everything I don't have anything now. empty now I start inserting e another insert x another insert this one until I get execution so this path here this path found me the solution right I have a path from intention to execution and the length of that path is how much was it 18 18 18 steps how do I know that this is the shortest path shortest path is going to give me the minimum edit distance I found a solution but I like to know whatever I found is the shortest path how would I know that Uh, calculate other uh, probabilities than uh, trace uh, each leaf maybe Pro what do you mean probability uh, the other uh, other paths other sides of uh, three okay. Oh, okay so you are saying that find all the paths explore the whole state space search three okay and all the executions that you find all the executions I okay here I found an execution here is another execution another path could be okay insert insert insert insert and delete delete delete delete another path could be substitute substitute substitute okay I may find many executions in this tree and choose the one choose the one <coughs> choose the one that uh, is closest to the, the start state okay yes so th this could be the solution okay we could do that but what is the size of this tree how many nodes are there in the tree at the beginning I have one now I have how many I have three now, right? So at each at each node, I can choose one of these three operations. So at the beginning, I have one, then I have three, nine, twenty-seven, and it goes like that. Okay, and I know that the most stupid one is eighteen steps long. 18 steps long it looks like it is 3 to the power k and it looks like it's going to be k is from 1 to 18 right so there are total of there are total of this many nodes 3 to 18 is how big is 3 to 18? It's very big. Right? It's very, very big. 3 to 18 is very, very big. I mean, 2 to the 20 is like mega numbers, right? Millions. And 3 to the 18 is like we are talking about millions. So just to find the minimum edit distance between two words, if I am going to have to check millions of millions of numbers, uh, the paths, then that's not a good idea. 
That's not a good idea. Because I am not going to do this once. I am not going to do this once. Why? Because if somebody if somebody gives me this word and I know that it is misspelled, I need to find I need to find the closest word in terms of minimum added distance to this word, right? To this uh, misspelled word. So I need to find the distance between, minimum added distance between this word and all the words in my dictionary. So I'm going to repeat this tens of thousands of times. That's why this algorithm is not a very good algorithm. Okay? This is not a very good algorithm. Space of all edit sequences is huge and we cannot afford to navigate naively. We need to be smart. And the thing is that, the thing is that from the start, insert, delete, and insert and delete is the same as delete, insert, delete, insert. This is the same as insert, insert, delete, delete. So I end up coming to the same state for many, many of the paths. Okay, so many of the paths, okay, very large of them, they are exactly the same paths in terms of my goal. Okay. Um, that's why we don't we don't like the solution. Our solution is going to use not state space search, but dynamic programming. Okay. And for dynamic programming, uh, the idea is don't solve the same problem over and over again. Okay. Don't solve the same problem over and over again. Instead. Always remember whatever you have solved for uh, up to now, okay? And keep them in a table. Keep them in a table. Okay? So that's the idea. But for now, I think I will have to stop. And I think I will end my lecture uh, for this week because, as I said, I am not feeling very well. Uh, so we will continue next week from this point, okay? Any questions? So Salman has a question. He says we can compare the cost after reaching the goal. Oh, okay. So th that's the question that they ask. Yeah. Well, uh, in fact, Salman, we don't have to, when we do this, since we are talking about it, if you do a breadth for a search, first search, okay. Genişlemesine, uh, breadth first, yanlamasına. Breadth for search. Um, First, we explore all the solutions that, that, can, that I can find in a single step, then a second step, then a third step, then a fourth step. So if I find a solution in five steps, then that means that I cannot find anything in, in a shorter amount of time. Okay? So uh, uh, if, if I do this breadth for search strategy, then uh, I am guaranteed to find the optimal path uh, as soon as I find the first solution. I don't have to go to all 18 levels, but it is still too much, too much time, too, too much memory. I don't like it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I will see you to uh, like next week. Okay.